Welcome everybody, James Wright back here with another review. This time it's the Atlas HO scale FM H16-44 locomotive in the Southern Scheme, road numbers 2152. MSRP on this is $269.95, so let's go ahead and unbox this. It has a sleeve as you see here, ESU logo, factory equipped with Loke Sound, Atlas logo up front, and the nice Atlas master line gold and black box, really sharp with a nice shiny finish to it. Then you've got the locomotive itself encased in this with some documentation of the H16-44 locomotive. Shows you all the parts in case anything breaks, part numbers inside and out. And the warranty card, limited 90 day warranty. So we'll get this unboxed. For those of you, oh, well, how could I forget about the quick start guide? Quick start guide, ESU Loke Sound, talks about all the different functions, etc. 15 page, 16 page document uh, total. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with Atlas products, the packaging's a little different than what you see in the industry most of the time. So, you have an outer sleeve on this as well. Take off the front and the supporting braces, and inside you have the locomotive, and you can also take off the back here. So it's just down to this tray that resembles a flat car. There's two screws on the bottom that you have to remove, so we'll do that. All right. The locomotive is free from its bondage, so now we can take a look at some detail on the front here. You have a coupler cut lever with the Atlas coupler brand and the magnetic trip pin wand accessory hoses up front you've got the white and black safety striping there you have an LED light you've got the number up front here you've got safety tread on the walkways crew access ladder and handrails handrails are of uh, medium durability a little bit of give but not much Looking along the side, you'll see cab figures installed on both sides. Horn's not on top, it's actually streamlined on the side here. You've got windshield wipers front and back on both of the windows. And you have the handrails, which are plastic, along the side. A little bit of a wave in the handrails, nothing too bad. It's kind of to be expected of the plastic handrails. Now we're going to go to some of the side detail on this end, more of the same. But a couple things really stick out to me, including on the top, you've got that nice fan grill and fan detail. It's a nice three dimensional look because it is three dimensional. <laughs> it's a fan sitting down in there um, versus being right at the top of some sort of cheesy sticker or something. And there's some underbody detail. The truck's very nice. Fuel tank, etc. So a very simple locomotive. Um, not a whole lot to cover. On this side, you got the brake wheel tucked away towards the cab. And uh, see both the crew figures are faced this direction because that's the direction that the front of the locomotive is as indicated by some of the warning labels, which are nicely done as well. We've got the F for indicating the front of the locomotive and some warning labels as well on there. So very nicely done in detail, but let's get into operation. There's your startup sequence. Go over some basic functions. F0 is the uh, headlight. And 
Also, I heard cup or clink there because I have some functions on that I need to turn off. But F1. Now that L that LED headlight is very nice, golden, uh, bright. It's a very very nice headlight. If you can see it in this light, you can tell that it's bright, and you can see that go on and off. Some manufacturers they use bulbs that are either sitting too far back or for whatever reason they look very very dim. Um, but this is a very good nailing down of an incandescent bulb appearance, but using an LED. So real pleased with that nice golden white. One is Bell. Two is Horn. Now the horn is all controlled by F2. There's no separate short horn function to my knowledge because it's really not needed. Uh, the decoder itself is so responsive. As you can tell there, I was able to do the grade crossing sequence and utilize that short horn. So a couple of clank we already heard, which is F3. F4 is diesel fan. F5 dynamic brake, which this does not have, so. So you have a switching mode, which you can do in F7. You can mute the audio in F8, manually notch up and notch down F9 and 10, cab sounds, etc. There's a lot of good stuff tucked away in this decoder. Well, there's the cab sound. That's a talking defect detector, so that's pretty cool. Let's listen to some manual notching up and notching down since we only really test under slow speeds for motor control. So we're, zoom, we're zoomed out a bit to check speed steps. We'll go to one. Very, very smooth and slow at one, crawling along at a very, very slow pace there. Two. Three. Four. And five. See how nice that headlight is while oh, we're watching this. But yeah, it's very, very smooth. So now we're going to go ahead and bring it to a stop. And go in reverse. One speed step. Two. Three. Four and five. 
So good speed control. Some of the slowest speeds I've seen in low speed control. I mean, the one really is a car. Time for a pull test. I don't know if you can see the screen very well or not, but I'll read off the results to you. This is a very short engine, so we'll see what it can do. Looking like 2.4 ounces. Which is about the middle of the road. I heard a rumor that every ounce is about 15 or 16 HO cars, standard rolling stock that you would pull. So, looking at a 30 car train, this should be able to pull without issue. 35 maybe, so it was 2.4 ounces. And you've got it almost, well, pretty much dead on. So, good on coupler height. The NMRA and KD coupler gauge. On the front, you have the same thing. Perfect coupler height. All right, here, let's go ahead and weigh this. On the scale, you've got 14.1 ounces, or 14 ounces it dropped to, 395 grams, 0.395 kilograms. We're looking at them almost a pound, you know, nine tenths of a pound. So there you have it. So here in a moment, we're gonna run by the locomotive for the final shot so you can see this in action. Don't have any cars to pull with it, but I did wanna leave you guys with just a few of my final thoughts. MSRP, don't let it scare you. There's always discounts out there at brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers uh, that can get this locomotive in the 100, the high 100s, mid to high 100s. So. You can always look for deals, so I know people always ask me, well, that MSRP, that MSRP, well, there's good prices out there to be found. Overall, this is a great locomotive. I think Atlas coupling up with ESU is a great idea because they have very accurate sounds, very nice crisp sounds. The sounds are more rich to me than many other decoders in the industry, so uh, very well done by ESU in both motor control. You saw how slow that thing creeped along and the fact that it sounds great and i think that's a great pairing with atlas so very very impressed with this locomotive i'm a lighting nut and i'm very very pleased mostly with how they could pull a led golden white led and make it look like an incandescent and have it bright enough that it doesn't look dull so nice done nicely done all around by atlas and i'm going to leave you with this run by thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on my channel